chapter number 27. We will get there in a moment, so I'm going to give you a moment to find it. And once you've found it, I'm going to share a few things to kind of just set the message and then we will read. There's something that I, I've i discovered uh, in, in my life as a minister and uh, getting out and uh, being around other people of other faith. I'm still confident Jesus is the only way. Amen. Amen. I, I, that's, that's my confidence. He is the only way. However, I do think that there are times where we can learn things from other other people, uh, we we learn. You know, before I moved here, we uh, uh, you know people make fun of me because you know in West Virginia we eat our chili by dipping peanut butter sandwiches in it. It's just the way they did it in the school system. And somebody said, "Well, that's your belly chili." Well, that's all right. I like it. You know, that's that was my culture, my custom. And, but when I moved to Pennsylvania, you folks have a lot of um, German and Dutch ways of things that you make. And, and boy, I've learned to love a lot of great things. I never heard of pot pie. They were what you call meat pies. That was our pot pie in West Virginia. And so uh, your pot pie, I've learned to enjoy that. I never had hot lettuce. Uh, dressing before. Uh, I, I sure like that. I mean, just so many, many things that I could go on about. I even like foster nuts. I mean, I didn't even know too much about homemade donuts. So I moved here, but man, I love that heavy dough. You know, I know it's, it's heavy everywhere else too, but it, it's just, you know, I like all that. And so I say that to say this, that, you know, we can learn a lot from culture, but oftentimes as we are diversified, we can learn things from other people's faith traditions. That's what I'm going to call it as this morning. Uh, I'm not compromising who I am or the Word of God. And you'll understand as I go more through my message this morning. But, but in America, you'll find that there is a religion that is growing. And uh, uh, it's interesting as I've, I, I look and I read, I see folks... Uh, uh, as, as in the chapel there at work, we have uh, the Muslim, the rugs, and we have their times that they pray upon the calendar and watching them in and out. And it sparked a little bit of interest to me of why they do that. I may not know the whole totality of everything, but I want to share something and share something that I believe that we can gain from in that once I give my example, look at scripture and we move on. But in America, the, the statistic that I found is a bit older, but in the year 2010, Muslim mosques grew from 1,209 to 2,000 mosques. Wow, that's crazy how much that has grown. And the Muslim religion is growing by leaps and bounds. It is now the third largest religion in America only to be preceded in number one to Christianity and Judaism. And so as we look at that, there, there are things that, 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 that is disturbing to me about that because I believe that we have truth in Jesus Christ. So it's disturbing to see that there are so many that, that don't have the truth of Jesus Christ in their life. But their call to prayer is five times a day. In fact, uh, the very first thing that, that uh, uh, a child will hear is that uh, uh, they will hear uh, the prayer of the Muslims being sung. And when they buy a house, the very first thing they will do when they get in that house, they will sing the prayer of their Muslim faith tradition. And so in Christianity, there used to be bells that would be ringed to, around to give a call to prayer to church. But in the Muslim religion, the shofar will be blown uh, as, as the call of religion is given. And when we look at the Muslim prayer, their prayer is this, that God is great. Uh, but I, I need to tell you that our God is greater this morning. Amen? Amen. 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 And in their prayer, 
prayer, you will hear that it, their call will be hurry to prayer, hurry to prayer, and then it will be hurry to success, hurry to success. And it closes with a line, the song that they sing is prayer is better than sleep. Hurry to prayer, hurry to success. And so that is heard around the world in Islam five times a day. And, and, and they kneel down and they pray. Uh, Jesus said this. He said this about the Pharisees. He said, except your righteousness exceed that of the Pharisees, you will perish. I believe that we can look and say today that if our righteousness doesn't exceed the righteousness of some religions, we will perish. There is a call to prayer that God wants us to pray. Paul said it this way, pray without ceasing. Jesus gave us the model of prayer. We have been called to pray. Amen. Not just five times, but many times. And so the chase is on. In America, uh, the, their call is that there is a call to prayer, but there is a call to success. I don't believe that we're any different here this morning. Each one of us have goals and each one of us wants to succeed. Amen. And there is a call that we must pray as we set our goals and as we succeed. Amen. Every one of us have goals. In fact, if you didn't have a goal, let me say this first. Our goals is, is what identifies us. It's what our values are. It's what our futures are. Every one of us have goals. I don't care what it may be. Some from 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 very uh, in infancy, getting through school, getting through college, finding a job that we uh, uh, that we enjoy, but also as well will give us revenue to enjoy the life that we want to live. Uh, there are goals to raise family. There are goals for our family to succeed. There's goals to have a home or uh, and the things in our home. We have goals, folks. Amen. Amen. Bottom line, we have goals, but we want those goals to be centered around Jesus Christ. Amen. And may He help us to achieve those goals that we have for our identity and for our future. You see, we can we can pursue nothing, and that's called utopianism, and that means everything is perfect. So no matter what happens, we will be perfect. That's a lie. So we need to have goals. Or we can pursue things. It's called materialism. Or we can pursue pleasures. That's called hedonism. Or we can pursue excellence. And I call that this morning seeking God. Amen. Amen. Nobody's pursuing excellence here. Amen. All seek something. All chase something. All pursue something. And David said it this way in Psalms 27. He said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked come against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumble and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though, David says, and I just lost myself, uh, in, in verse number three, verse number three. No war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. For in a time of trouble He shall hide me in His pavilion. In the secret of His tabernacle shall He hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing. Yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said, your, you, your face, Lord, will I seek. Amen. My heart said, Your face, Lord, I will seek. I need to tell you this. 
the Muslim's God is Allah. And his, his prophet is Muhammad. But our God does not need a prophet Muhammad. Amen. Our God is supreme. He is the Elohim. He is the uh, uh, El Shaddai. Amen. He is Emmanuel. There is no other name that has more excellence this morning than the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Word of God says that at His name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Every Muslim, every Buddhist, every Hindu, amen, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ, He is Lord. Amen. And this morning, each one of us is a seeker and we seek something. We have dreams and, and we hope that someday those dreams will come to pass. Amen. Our nation was founded upon this. Benjamin Franklin was the primary writer of the Declaration of Independence and he wrote, he said this. Uh, 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 he said he said, uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Amen. Even our founding father, Sister Jen, said, Jen, said this. They, they said that we are of our Creator. And Sister Dietrich, every one of us have the right to pursue happiness. That means goals. That means dreams. That means visions. But if we want an excellent life, we have to pursue the excellent one. Amen. 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 And you know what? David said this. He said, one thing will I seek after. Now let's stop for a moment. I want you to imagine. You may say, Brother Seville, but I have this in my life, or I have that, or, or these things. But David said that he was pursuing God, the man, the, the one that he was praying after. And David, he carried lots of successes with God in his life. But I need to tell you that he still had personal issues. He still had family issues. And he even had kingdom issues. But yet he pursued the excellence of God. So you may be here this morning and you may have your issues. I'll just leave it there. We all have our issues. Amen. Amen. Oh, God, we... We sure do, but one thing that is for sure, David was the example to show us that if we are going to succeed in our life, Amen. We must pursue the excellence of God. That even in the middle of all the issues that we have, we can still excel and we can still see God do great things. David said he was young and now he's old. And he never seen the righteous forsaken nor seen out begging for bread. David kept his eyes on God and pursued excellence. One thing, amen, and the underpinning of all of his pursuits, he pursued marriage, he pursued, uh, pursued family, he pursued being the king, he, he pursued a lot of things in his life, but the underpinning of it all was that he pursued God. Amen. You want great things in your life? Amen. And there's nothing wrong with having goals and having things that we want to achieve but the success of getting to where we want to be has to be the underpinning that we desire God more than anything else. Amen. You remember way back in the book of Exodus, there was a place where the children of Israel came and they came to this place that was called Elam, E-L-I-M. And as they were getting ready to come to Elam, there was still this time that they were three days out from the Red Sea. You remember that? Caleb, remember where the God opened the Red Sea when Moses put down his rod and uh, they went through on dry land. Pharaoh's army drowned in the sea. And there they were three days into their journey. Imagine this. And all of a sudden, things were getting rough. They were in the desert. They were in the wilderness area. And they did not like it. And they began to murmur and complain there was no water. Wow, they just saw God do the miraculous three days ago. And Sister Susan, now they're already starting to complain. Sounds a lot like us. Sounds like us. And so they begin to complain 
to Moses. And they, they found water, but it was bitter. Or, or there in that Hebrew, it was mar. The water was bitter. And so as they came to Moses with their complaints, Moses went before God and he prayed. And God showed him the tree that was fallen, throw it to the water. And there where there is bitter water, the water now becomes sweet. And they were obedient to God. And they pursued God in the middle of uh, their desert, in the middle of a uh, time that was difficult. And so here it was that God says, uh, says to them, let me read Exodus 15, verse 25. The Bible says, Then he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them. And he said, If you diligently heed the voice of, our law, of, of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all of the statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam, where there were twelve wells of water and suddenly palm trees, so they camped there by the waters. I want you to know that there are going to be times that are going to be difficult in our life. Can you ever go through that? Yeah, no. But God said that if you will keep His ordinance and you will seek Him, that He will provide a place for you. Let's look at this Elam for a moment. This Elam was a place where there was barrenness, but God brings them to a place that is wonderful. That's a place where you want to put down the stakes of your tent and you want to camp. The Bible says that there, there were 12. Uh, that, that word 12, we think about the disciples. That number 12 also means completeness. If you will seek God, even when it's difficult, even when it's barren, even when you don't like what you're going through, and if you will be obedient to Him, He will bring you into completeness. And there, there were 70 palm trees. That word 70 means convocation or congregation. He will bring you into a place where you will be nurtured and you will be redeemed and it will be a congregation of the redeemed. You will not be alone. None of us want to be alone here. None of us want to lay our head down on our pillow and be alone. None of you want to get up and, and spend your day by yourself. We all like others. That's right. And if you will seek God, He brings us into a congregation of the redeemed. Miracle Revival Church on a smaller scale. The kingdom of God on this, side of, on this side of eternity on a larger scale. He'll bring you into the kingdom of the redeemed when you die. A great congregation. God will make sure that you're taken care of. I want you to know that we do not serve a God that is a lesser God. But we are a God that is a greater, the most high God. He is greater. You read the book of Hebrews, the whole theme of Hebrews is that God is greater. He's the greater priest. He's the greater sacrifice. Amen. He's the greater way of worship. Amen. He is greater. Amen. Paul said that he had not attained to perfection, but he continued to pursue. He said, I press toward the mark. I press toward the prize. I press toward Jesus Christ. You want the greater this morning? Amen. It's a pursuit of excellence. And it's pursuing Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the goals in your life, when you align them with Jesus Christ, amen, it is the greater, the more optimal outcome. Amen. It's the more optimal marriage. It's the more optimal family raising. It's the more optimal uh, outcome of your children. It's the more uh, optimal job. Amen. When you see Christ, I would dare say that the majority, some may be seeking nothing, just going along like a fish, a dead fish floating over the water. Most of you are a lot of fish in here. And you fight against the current because you have goals. If you will put Christ at the center of your goals, there will be nothing that will keep you from achieving excellence. Amen. 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 I believe it this morning, brother. Yes. I believe it this morning, sister. In David's struggles, he found himself in the sanctuary. Isaiah said, But they that wait upon the Lord will renew 
Amen. So as we wait, we seek, we desire Him more than anything else. Amen, God. I want you. There is a renewal that will come to us. Amen. What's the goals of your life? You feel like you're old. You feel like you're a has-been. You feel like you've never started. You feel like something has handicapped you. Amen. God can set you free. Amen. Seek the excellence of who He is. Amen. Seek Christ. Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things will be added unto you. God wants an intimate relationship with you. Listen, God's not a God who just wants to be your friend on Facebook. God just doesn't want to be part of your Twitter account or you to be part of His and just follow. God wants an intimate relationship. Social media has destroyed what is the reality of a real gap in relationship. And God wants that with you and I. Amen. He wants us to seek Him like He's the breath that we breathe. That He's the water that we have to drink. Seeking God. Amen. Success comes through Him. The whole key to a successful life is abiding in Christ. Jesus said that we need to abide in Him. He's the vine and we are the branches. If we are going to produce the grapes, if you would, this morning, it's going to take us as the, as, as, as the branch abiding in the vine. You don't produce fruit if you're not abiding in the, the, the vine. And He is, uh, we are the branches and He is the vine. We need to abide in Him. That needs to be our pursuit of excellence that I want to produce. Amen. No one wants to come to the end of their life and say, I've done nothing. I've been nothing. Amen. We may look and think that other people have been greater in different areas. God has called us all to different occupations. God has called us all to different outcomes. But the most important thing, that whatever it is that God has called us to, that we are the best at it because we have abided in Him and we produce fruit that has come from living our life in Him, pursuing excellence. I love Hebrews. The theme of Hebrews, I said, is, is greater than, but the key word is consider him. Yeah. I'll never forget in Bible school, sitting in my class and Brother Pettit teaching us in Hebrews and how magnificent that was to me as we thought about the book of Hebrews and consider him. Christ wants us to consider him in every area of our life. Amen. That is the pursuit of happiness and every one of us is entitled to it. Amen. Abide the code of the United States of America, but even more so by the code that Christ has breathed life in us. He wants us to pursue happiness, and happiness is only found in the excellence of Him. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He's our inner strength. He's our inner assurance. He's our peace. He's our joy. He's our fulfillment. Amen. Uh, David didn't say that he came to seek after his excellent beauty, but he came to seek after him. I come to the garden alone. What we do is still in the roses. And the voice I hear falling on my ear. Son of God in his closeness. And he speaks with me. And the sound of his voice is so sweet that the birds have their singing. And the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. And the joy that we share as we as ever. No. I'm talking about very early pursuing God. I'm talking about walking and talking with God. And the joy that no one can know outside the realm of seeking the excellence of God. It's incomparable joy. It's incomparable beauty. It's incomparable understanding. 
Paul said this. He said, the things that I've gained in this world, he said, I count them as loss, that I may obtain the excellency. Yeah. We can achieve a lot of things, but if we do not achieve Christ, it's waste. The excellency of knowing that Jesus Christ is my Lord. The personal knowledge of Him, that I may know Him as King, and Priest, and Savior, and Healer, and Shepherd, that I may know Him in the works that He has done, but in the works that He is doing and is going to do, that I may know Him, that I may know Him in His suffering, but that I may know Him in His glory. Yes. That I may know Him it's a satisfying knowledge. I don't know a lot about jewelry. I know when I went to pick up my wife's engagement ring, I was hours at the shop. And the lady was there, and she looked at the jeweler, and, you know, she looked at it. And Sister Jan, she was looking at it from every angle as a diamond refracted light from angles that I probably have never looked at. Sister Susan, but the refraction from everyone. Have we looked at God like that? That in every angle and every way we've seen his beauty refracted as he displays his majesty and glory. You see, God pursues us daily. Jeremiah said, For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, thoughts of a, of a future, and thoughts of, a, of hope. Amen. He said, If you will call upon me and pray, he said that, that I will answer you, I will listen to you, and you shall find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Amen. Are we seeking God with our whole heart? See, most of us, most of us have goals in life. Most of us have objectives. Things that we want. I mean, we do. We want to have a job that we not only get paid revenue to live, but that we enjoy. Amen. Most pursue that. You know, families. Most of us want our kids to be happy and healthy and well-adjusted. Most of us want our marriage to work. And, you know, some of us, most of us, want our relationship with God to work. But we don't pursue it. We should work to work. See, we've got to pursue God. His excellence. Some say, I can only go this far. I'm only willing to go to church this much. I'm only willing to pray this much. But you see, we've got to have a close personal relationship with God. He's got to be our driving force. He said if He's not Lord of everything, He's not Lord of all. God wants to be involved in your life every day. Are you allowing Him? How's your worship? How's your prayer? Sister Holly, if you come to the piano, I want to close by sharing a story of a lady. Her name was Anna, but in Hebrew it was Hannah. And she had been married for seven years, and her husband died. Seven years is a wonderful time, but it's certainly not long enough to be married when you want to spend the rest of your life. But God's plans are different for everybody. Everybody's cross is different. So her husband dies after seven years. And this is what Anna said. She said, God is my husband. I'm married to God now. And as we study the Bible, we find that the temple becomes her fixture. Now I want you to imagine that in these days, it wasn't like church here where all, from young to old, from male to female, can all come together at the altar. Females could only come to a certain place in court, you know, uh, at the temple. They couldn't come all the way. Couldn't go as far as men. And so there's where she stayed. The Bible says day and night. And she dwelt in the temple at the age of 84 years old. 
She had been in the temple probably for as much as almost 60 years. She finally saw what she longed to see. An eight-day-old Messiah being brought. Thank you. 